uh, it's a lovely sunny morning. I've arrived at Liverpool Street Station after an early start from Norwich. And I'm here to do mental health first aid training. Uh, I should have done it really, I think, ages ago. Uh, I've been planning it for a long time, but never quite got round to it because of the sort of busy schedule that I uh, have with this job. Uh, but I'm glad that it's finally happening. Uh, and it's particularly relevant because uh, on the West Midlands Mental Health Commission that I chair, uh, we're looking at trying to find a way of uh, achieving a major expansion of mental health first aid uh, in the West Midlands. Uh, and I felt that uh, if I was arguing the case for others to do it, I had to do it myself. Uh, so uh, I really have no idea what to expect today, uh, but I'm looking forward to it. And I'm also conscious that with World Mental Health Day on the 10th of October, uh, and with a particular focus on uh, psychological men and mental health uh, first aid for all, uh, it's a particularly appropriate time to do it, I guess. So here we go, just about to walk to uh, the hotel where the training will take place. I'll report back later. Uh, so uh, we've now been going for some hours on our uh, mental health first aid training. Uh, I found it really useful. Uh, I thought in particular the discussion about uh, supporting people uh, who may feel uh, suicidal uh, was particularly powerful and helpful. Um, having experienced uh, loss in our family um, and learning about what uh, I might have done uh, differently uh, but also incredibly important in terms of uh, if I'm ever faced with that situation again uh, recognising the importance of actually being open uh, with the person and uh, ensuring that they feel uh, that there's nothing to be ashamed of or embarrassed about but to open up as much as uh, possible uh, learning about sort of empathetic listening and uh, being able to uh, give a person some confidence that their uh, story that they're telling you, their anxieties that they may be talking to you about, uh, that you're actually understanding and taking it on board. Um, uh, we've learned a lot about different conditions and the sort of symptoms of different conditions. We've been talking about psychosis and bipolar, uh, depression, um, and then of course other conditions like obsessive compulsive disorder, anxiety disorders. Uh, so I, I found it incredibly helpful and uh, I would recommend it to anyone. Well, I'm now back at Westminster after a day doing the mental health first aid course. Uh, we had a really excellent uh, tutor with us all day who I thought explained things incredibly clearly uh, and uh, with um, a real sort of sense of purpose. Uh, it was a fascinating experience. We had a real mix of people uh, from a range of different backgrounds, different ages, uh, different experiences, uh, different types of workplace. Uh, and I think the great beauty of mental health first aid is that it uh, is valuable to people from all sorts of different walks of life. It's valuable in the workplace, it's valuable for members of the public uh, in terms of dealing with friends, loved ones, neighbours, uh, people within the community. And I think it's great in giving you a greater sense of confidence in dealing with uh, mental health, uh, dealing with your own mental health, understanding better uh, health and well-being, understanding about different conditions. Uh, it's really good to do some exercises, just uh, talking through issues with people, uh, getting to uh, understand the absolute importance of listening uh, to people, uh, uh, giving them time, uh, taking their concerns seriously, understanding how best to uh, support people. So uh, I think it's a great uh, concept uh, and I certainly endorse mental health first aid very strongly uh, and I very much want to uh, find ways of making it a much bigger thing in the West Midlands where we're uh, undertaking work on the Mid Midlands, West Midlands Mental Health Commission which I'm chairing. Uh, because I think if we can really 
get into the community, get into workplaces, critically get into schools with teachers and with students, then we can have a massive impact on raising mental health literacy, understanding, awareness, and building people's capacity to support others uh, more effectively. And ultimately, if we can uh, stop people's condition deteriorating, if we can stop people getting into crisis, if we can guide people to help where necessary, uh, then we can have a big impact on people's lives. And of course, we can also reduce the uh, massive burden on uh, statutory services, uh, which um, uh, at the moment are struggling to cope because the demand is so great. So this is a great sort of community uh, uh, exercise. And it's, it's a great example of public mental health at its best. So I strongly endorse it.